What's going on, bibliophiles? Welcome back to Poetry and Prejudice. I hope that you are having a fantastic Monday, and if you aren't, I hope a little poetry makes your day a little better. Today we are going to be reading a masterpiece. We are going to be reading Buffalo Bills by E.E. E. Cummings, which is probably his most widely anthologized poem. With that being said, let's go ahead and crack into the reading. Buffalo Bills Defunct who used to ride a water-smooth silver stallion and break one, two, three, four, five pigeons just like that. Jesus, he was a handsome man. And what I want to know is, how do you like your blue-eyed boy, Mr. Death? Now let's analyze the poem line by line. The speaker begins, Buffalo Bill's defunct. The speaker starts with an allusion to Buffalo Bill, whose real name was William Frederick Cody, an American showman in the late 1800s who, along with the troupe, had a show called Buffalo Bill's Wild West, which were essentially staged cowboy shows. Now, the speaker says of Buffalo Bill that he is defunct. This is interesting from the perspective of word choice. What the speaker technically means is that Buffalo Bill is dead. But the speaker obviously does not use that word. Rather, he has a more mechanical, so to speak, way of describing that Buffalo Bill is no longer in existence. He says that he is defunct, which suggests a certain amount of emotional distance from Buffalo Bill, the human being, dying. The speaker continues, who used to ride a water smooth silver stallion. There's a couple things I would have you note here. The first is the pace and rhythm at which you are intended to read the lines. They are broken up in such a way that there is almost a galloping feel as you read them. And of course, this is the intended effect because that is what is being described here. Buffalo's part, Buffalo Bill's part in the show was to ride around on a stallion and shoot clay pigeons. I would also have you stop and appreciate the imagery. He calls the stallion water smooth silver. I appreciate this because there's something very similar to the way that water moves and a horse moves, particularly when it's galloping. So if you notice, for example, in a river, particularly one that has stones, the way that the water moves almost has a gallopy feel to it. Also, there's something similar in its smoothness and its color. So water, of course, as it, as it moves along, has a very silverish sheen, particularly if the light of the sun is hitting it at a particular angle. And something similar happens with horses. If you've ever seen them run in the, in the, you know, in the wind as their mane is flowing back and their pelt is very shiny, you can see how these might be similar. There's almost something very silvery or I would even say silken about a horse running in the wind. And I would say that that's a quality similar with water. Speaker continues and break one, two, three, four, five pigeons just like that. Once again, there's something very interesting going on with the pace and rhythm at which you are supposed to read these lines, in particular, the last two phrases, one, two, three, four, five pigeons just like that. You're supposed to read those together. They're scrunched together precisely because it's trying to give you the effect of what is being described. In this case, Buffalo Bill shooting clay pigeons very, very quickly. One, two, three, four, five. We get a sense of his skill and his ability surely based on the pace at which we read these lines. The speaker then says, almost with a sigh, Jesus, he was a handsome man. I don't think that these lines require too much interpretation. I think they are quite literal. But one thing I would have you note is the speaker's tone. One way to interpret this would be that the speaker is being sincere. He's just merely complimenting Buffalo Bill's looks. He was a handsome man. The other and more likely interpretation in my point of view would be that the speaker here is being quite sarcastic. Jesus, he was a handsome man. And I say that because of the lines that follow. Despite the fact that he was handsome, what I want to know is, how do you like your blue-eyed boy, Mr. Death? Which is to say that despite the fact that Buffalo Bill, in his day, was quite famous, despite the fact that he was very skilled, that he could break one, two, three, four, five pigeons just like that, despite the fact that he was handsome and blue-eyed, he succumbed to the same fate that we all succumb to which is death. We may not be as famous as Buffalo Bill. We may not be as skilled 
We may not be as handsome and blue-eyed, but nonetheless, we will suffer the same fate as him. And thus, there's kind of an equalizing effect here. We also know that the speaker places a lot of importance on death because death here is personified. He calls death Mr. Death, and he treats it as a proper noun. It's capitalized, which is interesting considering the first stanza. In the first stanza, Buffalo Bill is not being, not being described as being dead or he's not being described as perished. He's described as being defunct, which is the most unpersonal way to describe death. And yet death itself, towards the end of the poem, is personified, treated as if it's a person who has come and taken away Buffalo Bill. What does this poem say thematically? In my opinion, this poem speaks to a universal human experience, which is this, that we as human beings are mortal creatures. Most of us have anywhere between 70 and 100 years to fulfill whatever it is that we are going to fulfill while we are on Earth while we are alive. Some of us will live lives that are more extraordinary than others. Some of us will go on to be famous, very skilled. Some of us might even be beautiful and blue-eyed. But despite that, despite everything that we achieve while we are here on Earth, despite the adulation of our fellow creatures, we are all going to suffer the same tragic, terrible fate which is to say that we will, at some point, be consumed by death. Death is, as has been said multiple times, the great equalizer. And that is what this poem speaks to. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it there. You guys tell me down in the comments below what you think about this analysis, or tell me what your thoughts are on Buffalo Bill by E.E. E. Cummings. Otherwise, if you enjoyed this content, hit that like button, smash subscribe, Hit the notification bell so you can be informed when I drop more videos on poetry and prejudice. Until next time, guys.